Hey everyone, welcome to Brick Vault. This model is for you, Joseph. That's right, you've been asking for this for like a year or something. So if anybody has model requests in the future, remember you can always comment below. This is the highly detailed minifigure scale Soulless One custom Lego design from the builder Fukusaku. Did you know this ship is a customized Utapau Fithen Otra scalable assemblies Bell Belab 22 Starfighter? But who cares? All you really need to know is that Grievous flies this ship and it looks especially mean and sleek for a snub-nosed starfighter. This is an incredibly solid physical model. It's got tons of lightly finessed angles, all the functions you would expect for this ship, and more than one kind of display stand option. Before I jump in, first let me just say that if you wanted to build this creation for yourself, the instructions can be found at brickvault.toys. With each purchase comes that PDF step-by-step -step building guide and a parts list for fast ordering your pieces online. The models here are physically tested in real life. We test the instructions for the ease of build and the parts are chosen with availability in mind. Buying instructions is an excellent way to help support the channel. And at the same time, you are supporting the talented, talented designers we work with like Fukusaku, who has made tons of Clone Wars era bundles of ships and vehicles at one to 50 micro scale, plus several speeders, some JDM car candy from Initial D and construction vehicles that are way too detailed for their own good at that minifig scale. Link in the description below. And I was startled at how small the Soulless One actually is in universe. Did you know this ship is significantly shorter than a Nabu N1? For some reason in my head, I imagined this starfighter as a slightly bigger, beefier ship, but in actuality, it is a fairly small, nimble little craft. And all the designs you see here flashing by the screen are minifigure scale. So this is how the Soulless One compares to the rest. Now the designer used several advanced techniques to bring this unique shape together. It really is a different kind of design in terms of subtle details. There is the rounded tapering center that slowly gets more narrow, a plate at a time until you hit the quarter round front. Some really advanced stuff here with the gold and dark orange slopes staggered together. They are both studded in and cleverly wedged under a layer of plates that give you some nicely welcomed accents that contrast well against the dark bluish gray body. This is an area of the model that really pops and I think it took a lot of consideration to complete in a way that doesn't pull away from any of the other model shaping. Now my favorite bit of building is right here in the front though with these cone-like tips for the engine. They sink back into the body with that distinct layer between the cone and the rest of the engine design. And this is a signature design motif found on other Utapau ships. And if I had to wager a guess though, it's probably inspired from the Pratt & Whitney J58 found on the Blackbird. So if any sci-fi ship can remind me of this beast, then my brain is basically incapable of not liking the way it looks. There are some other great unique approaches to the build, like the trans clear suspension of some jagged details in the front and the panel attachments that outline the cockpit towards the rear. But now I'd like to change gears and focus on some of the functions. So while we're here in the rear, the windscreen folds forward on some droid arms. They're connected a bit deeper into the model. So you have a different kind of folding arch here when it rises up, gives you plenty of space for the multi-armed Grievous fig to fit inside. There are also some printed console pieces for him to press buttons and control the ship. And then way in the back, you have the rotating vector fin. Now in universe, this is supposed to help direct the thrust from the engines and it is meant to be folded flat or pointed out, I should say, while landed. Though throughout the Clone Wars saga, you do not see it retracted back while landed. It's something that I think only gets seen later in its canonical life.
life, like episode three and maybe like one episode at the end of the Clone Wars show. So I'm pretty sure this was a modification made to the ship towards the end of the Clone Wars, but never actually recorded in any canon description of the ship. The good news here is that you can basically use this arm to fulfill either role. So like right now, this is the stabilizing arm for the earlier iteration of the ship. Or if you want this to look more like the later version of the model, this piece can then just function as the rear landing gear when it's on the ground. Now in conjunction with the rear landing gear, there is also two other feet that fold down in the front at the bottom. Excellent details, by the way, at the bottom. There is that third rapid fire cannon in the center with some great bit of construction. I also really enjoy the connections here for these extra splayed thrusters in the back. But getting the ship into its final landed configuration, I love that it leans back just like how it should in universe. And this is one display option for sure. It's something that can easily integrate into a larger diorama, but you can also attach this to a stand. Fukusaku, in fact, designed two different display stands depending on your preference. There is the more traditional all black that falls into the more uniform display stand style if you wanted it to match with other black stands in a larger collection, for example. And then there is one it's almost the same as this. You just add a bit more pieces and it's got some extra grievous flair. In the front, we have a large console for some scheming. And in the rear, you can see a bit of his saber collection. When I ordered all the parts for this model, I actually got a second fig, just assuming I didn't have an extra grievous lying around. But lo and behold, while sifting through a bag somewhere, I found our second grievous, which means I get to have them both in the cockpit and at his console at the same time. Doesn't really make sense, but it's definitely fun for us here. In terms of functionality, the model studs in really strong at the top. It can rotate in any direction you want. It's got a natural cant, but if you wanted the soulless one to be horizontal to the ground, you just add two plates under this tile here and it's perfectly level. So all in all, this is a very, very complete setup for this ship. It's a robust model, fairly casual to pick up and handle and swoosh around, and something that would make a fine... Something that would make a fine... Nope, I'm not saying it. That's your job. There are about a thousand other identical comments over the years. This model is an excellent inclusion to your gaggle of Lego builds. Yes, that's correct. A group of Lego builds together is actually called a gaggle, probably. Look it up. I don't know. Instructions at BrickVault.toys. Let me know what other builds you'd like to see in the future. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end. If you enjoy our content, feel free to like, subscribe, comment, or share, and we'll see you next time at BrickVault. Yeah!